Hi. Hi. Hello. Thank you so much for tuning in to our Prism React series. Uh, we are in week one now, and we're really excited to share with you uh, this piece that we've put together based on Flory Maunders's Dendro forms. Uh, we hope you enjoy. A few things about what you do slash make. So this is just generally in day to day. Oh gosh, um, <laughs> things I do and make. Um, well, in terms of music, um, I'm doing um, a whole load of, of, of different projects, basically. Um, gosh, that's so open-ended, I don't know where to start. <laughs> um, I mean, I like to describe myself as a as a composer. So, like my my main creative activity is basically writing dots and then getting somebody else to play them. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, I, I am a performer too, and um, I've been you know taking advantage of this whole lockdown isolation thing to do a bit of that whole composer as performer, performer as composer mm -hmm. stuff. So I've been doing some some things myself. Um, a couple more projects cooking away there at the moment. Let's watch the series. <laughs> so when you say you perform is that with doing electronics or is it actual instrumental based things um, yes yes um it's both um the thing i'm really interested in the moment is um electronic manipulation of, of, of live performance so um i've, I've just Ooh. released a, a couple of videos last month with me playing the clarinet and running it through a whole load of um electronic effects and so on to produce well basically a barrier of amazing noises um yeah. it's, it's fantastic the live manipulation of the sound is, is so exciting i mean it's quite fun to chop up recorded audio afterwards and do stuff to it but when it's all happening live so you play in there and this cascade of chords emerges from your instrument it's you know it's quite yeah. exciting yeah you, you can just like tamper with everything you want and you never know what's gonna gonna come out basically yeah i love that yeah yeah, so, so that's, that's very interesting, and I think I'm going to do some, some stuff this afternoon with, with recorders and electronics. Is, is my kind of Sunday afternoon plan. My poor cool. bloody gamers. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, what ideas and experiences have you uh, had behind like submitting what you've submitted for Prism for this uh, reaction thing? What um, is that the right question? Am I just, yeah, I'm, I'm just right chatting question. absolutely nonsense. It's a good question. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what, what you're asking, but it's a great question. It sounds really good. Um, you want me to talk to you about, um, about dendrid forms? Yes. Yeah, like, well, 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 how, like how did that sprout? Where did that come from? Oh, gosh. I mean, this is just one of those, one of those things that kind of happens um, kind of unintentionally. Um, basically, it came out of a conversation with my son, who's a very keen keen drawer he wants to be an illustrator when he's, when he's grown up um, he's, he's really into art and we were, we're talking about drawing trees basically and um, it all got a bit philosophical because um, you know the, the basic kid tree is basically a green lollipop with a brown stick isn't it mm. and we we see that as a tree shape and, and, but you never see a tree that, that looks like that so trees don't actually have the shape of, of, of green lollipop on a brown stick it's kind of like a, a stylized tree but we, we talked about tree shapes and the shapes that the trees make and we did some tree drawing and we got onto sort of green scribble with a brown y shape holding it up you know so mm. you put some branches in there. and um that led into a kind of musical exploration of these kind of shapes as well because actually the shapes of trees are really, really interesting. I mean, I could go on about tree shapes now for like an hour. <laughs> Music is like, has got this time dimension. I mean, I mean, sometimes it's very explicit and sometimes we think about it a lot and sometimes we just take it for granted, but you know, it's got a beginning and a middle and an end and stuff happens in order and you can't play the pieces out of order. You can't play the beginning at the end or the end of the beginning because if you play the end at the beginning, it becomes the beginning, doesn't it? Mm. Yeah. yeah. Do you know what I mean? I mean yeah. you, so it has that kind of, of time, linear time built into it. Um, so it's kind of like shapes on the page maybe transformed into time. And, and trees are like the other way around because they've, the shape of the tree is like concrete time. So it sounds a bit crazy, doesn't it? But like the actual cycles of the seasons and, and, and the rotation of the years and, and so on is actually reflected in the, in the shape of the tree. So that tree has grown like that because of the time it has experienced. Mm. You can, you know, the classic cut a slice through it and count how many years growth it's got. I mean, you get a dead tree then. But 
Yeah. So mm. there's something very interesting about that combination of form and time, which yeah. speaks to me as a musician. Um, but also it's just great, great shapes. So like the whole creative process for this Dendro Bombs thing, um, my son Ruben and I, we, we went out and did a whole load of outdoor art in the garden, with great big sheets of paper. And we did bark rubbings and leaf rubbings and, and leaf tracings. And, and we drew the shape, shapes of trees. And we, we used natural materials to create art, like, um, you know, made paint out of mashed up leaves and mud and stuff like that. Oh, wow. Um, and then, then we had a photography session and we went, um, um, you know, he loves pressing the camera button, who doesn't? So we photographed all of these, all of these images we created in high res. And then, um, then I did the whole graphic design part of it and turned it into a series of graphic scores, most of which explore linear shapes or circular shapes. Mm. Yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely. I, I, I love that. It's, that makes complete sense, really. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it sounds terribly arty and wanky, doesn't it? It's like we're exploring oh. the concept of time made concrete through tree growth. But it's, n it's not though, because music is ever evolving and ever changing. And like what we're trying to do in this project is actually, it's not pushing boundaries. It's just trying to make new different outlets of, of music. And that's exactly what you've supplied with us. Mm. Like you've got this background story, which actually makes complete sense and um, have turned it into these, um, these dendroform uh, score picture graphic things, which are so mesmerizing to look mm. at. And they have turned uh, out looking amazing, haven't they? It's yeah, kind of like this moment of self satisfaction. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm quite passionate about in terms of music that's based on graphic or notation, is that it's really, really interesting, useful for the audience to be able to see the same images as the performers. So that the stimulus becomes like a bridge between the the listeners and the performers it's a shared experience then mm. so it, i don't know I, I think it offers a lot a lot to performers to have that that visual oh that's why they're making those sounds i get it <laughs> rather than they're just making up whatever they feel like <laughs> yeah it definitely doesn't mean crazy modern extended it just it's it's like no. there's so many different fac facets mm. to to what contemporary means that i think me as a, a, a uh, as an individual, I've definitely put contemporary music into a box and I'm now widening that spectrum of what it can actually be. So, yeah, I mean, a lot of contemporary improvised music and contemporary jazz and, and so on, um, and even some sort of contemporary electronica um, and dance music would, would sit very comfortably in a programme together with classical art music. Yeah. I mean, I'd, I'd hate this word classical. It's completely yeah. the wrong word, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's a classic it's classical i wrote it yesterday <laughs> <laughs> i don't know in lockdown it's definitely uh been easy to slip into like doing nothing which is fine actually like if you're mm. not motivated to do something one day that's perfectly fine but for you for example it's been that, that sounds amazing that you've been able to just get on and have all these little things that weren't planned and uh yeah have come out from being in, in this, uh, in, in your own space? I think I've been quite fortunate with a couple of them. People have actually approached me and they've said, Flory, what we were going to do is cancel, but would you like to do this instead? And, um, and then um, some th things I was working on before the whole lockdown started kind of came to fruition during the period as well. And, um, you know, you apply for funding and grants and calls for schools and commissions and competitions and so on. And you wait forever for the results to come in, don't you, for these things? Yeah. And um, it's quite nice that sort of during this period, every couple of weeks or so, it seems that someone's got back to me and said, you know what, we, we would like to play your music or, okay, your funding application is successful. Yeah. It's always just like good to think about the positives and seeing people succeed like that is um, something very special. No matter who it is, it's, yeah. it's, 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 you've got to celebrate when something goes, what goes well for someone. That's amazing. Moving on to some silly fun questions. I've got to uh, ask some fun questions. Well, with, um, with uh, I, this question is a very like odd question because I, I interpret it one way and someone else interprets it another way. But um, your music and art that you make 
um, if it were a place, where would it be? So that can be a fond family memory or a city or a monument or your, oh the, the, left, the left corner of your sofa. <laughs> it could be like if, if my music that I made was a place, what would it be? I don't know because the music I make is so different and, and, and varied. I mean, some of it's probably like um, sort of Waterloo Underground Station or something. Um, you know, <laughs> it's, it's just busy and a bit grimy and, and underground. Um, and it's going somewhere. Um, and probably some of my music is, is much more outdoorsy, some lovely... I mean, I'd love to say my music is inspired by the Atlas Mountain Range of Southern Morocco or something. <laughs> and, you know, it, there are composers whose music you do so much associate with a particular place. I mean, can you imagine Benjamin Britten without the Norfolk coast? Yeah. No. You know, it's, it's just that, that whole kind of sense of place music. Maybe, maybe my music not having a sense of place is something about me. Uh, well, it was uh, lovely getting to know you, Flory, and actually mm. meeting, putting a face to the yeah. music. Um, oh gosh, what a face. <laughs> oh, stop. <laughs>